Okay, welcome to lecture six. So uh, if you guys um, recall what we have seen in the previous lecture, so we covered uh, path lengths. So the shortest path um, model, and we looked at how to compute the efficiency of information flow on a graph through these three different uh, measures. So we looked at local efficiency, nodal, and global efficiency. And other also uh, other metrics such as the harmonic mean and uh, the characteristic path length. So this was in uh, lecture five. And in today's lecture, we will cover the second model, which is the diffusion model to compute uh, information flow efficiency on a graph. So we will learn about how information, how, to how information diffuses through a graph and look at these particular um, measures, the search information and the path transitivity. And also, um, these basically will enable us to compute the diffusion efficiency. We will also look at the concept of communicability between nodes or communicability of a graph. Okay? So, let's start from where we have left off, left off in the previous lecture. So, if you guys remember, we have looked at the shortest path uh, routing, so how to compute efficiency. So here, if you, uh, the rule is basically that information flows from a starting point to an ending point following the, a single path, and that path has the shortest path, okay? So, had the shortest length, sorry. So, this is, you know, what we call um, the shortest path routing. So, this was the first model. And if you remember that we had a tourist uh, called Alice. She wanted to go from her hotel to Tokyo uh, Tower. And for that, actually, what you need to have for the shortest path routing model is you need to have a, uh, a map of your graph, okay? Which means that you have a global knowledge. You can see the whole, the whole uh, structure of your graph. So this is when you can use the shortest path routing model. But uh, imagine if you, um, well, you do have, you know the, the structure of your graph, but you don't know your destination. You don't have a particular destination, so you just want to go and explore this graph. So this is what we call the diffusion model, so or information diffusion on a graph. So what is information diffusion? You're starting from a, uh, a point or a node on your graph, and you will kind of uh, try to visit different nodes. But the difference here that when you're using the diffusion model, uh, it's like a, a diffusion of particles around, along different uh, pipes, okay? Or you have a fluid that goes through different pipes and disperses. So this is what we call information dispersion. So you have the information at the same time when it reaches a node or a branch across um, um, a branch or a um, crossing point. So what you have, you have different options. You have different routes coming out of that node. So here, the information will simultaneously propagate what we call on multiple fronts. So it, can, uh, it will diffuse through these three routes, but maybe with different uh, probabilities or different uh, tendencies, okay? So basically, in the diffusion model, we don't necessarily have a, a single destination, okay? So it's like, you know, simultaneous propagation along the paths that are available to you, okay, when you're going from uh, one node to another node. So here, let's look at this example, you guys will understand more. So for example, here what we have, uh, this is our graph, okay, so we want to go from node i to j. So to go from node i to j, it's quite simple, so you have, you have a simple path, um, here, so a single path, and you follow this path. So if you had, like, you know, let's say other options, so your options will be maybe, uh, you know, you'll have, like, more nodes. This will be a longer path. So at the end, when you're trying to find the shortest path, it turns out that this is the shortest path, and you choose it, and you can easily get from I to J. Uh, I to J. And for that, we can use any of the algorithms we've seen. So we've seen... Uh, Dijkstra's algorithm to find the shortest path, okay? 
So in this, uh, in this model, uh, we have basically, uh, we want to find the shortest path from node i to j, and this is like sending a, me a message. So you know exactly your destination, and you're going from a particular, you're starting from a particular node, and reaching another uh, specific node. Okay, so this is, you know, targeted uh, communication, like sending communication. Okay like sending a message, okay. Now, on the other hand, when you have a diffusion model, so you're starting from node i, and then simultaneously diffuse through these, uh, through the local nodes, the neighboring nodes, and at the end, what you're going, what you will end up with is basically diffusing through the, this information to throughout all the nodes in the graph, okay? So for example, whenever you reach what we call a branching or a forking node right here, so you have like a, a fork, so information will still diffuse three uh, along these um, edges. In this case, it's not uh, like message sending, this is what we call, if you guys think about this as a station and you have, you know, you want to uh, send out a message to everyone, this is like broadcasting, okay? Great, so under the diffusion models, if we compare both of them, the information sent from a single node can reach any uh, of a number of destinations via any of a number of paths, okay? So this is like broadcasting a message through a graph. So these are two simple differences between the diffusion model and the shortest path uh, routing model. Now. To analyze this, if you guys remember, how are we going to analyze diffusion on a graph? How are we going to model this? So if you, uh, previously we looked at uh, the second tourist, so this was in lecture five. So scenario two, basically we have a, a, a tourist, uh, Bob, he's like starting from a point and he's kind of wandering, randomly chooses a direction uh, whenever he arrives at an intersection because at those intersections, these are the points where you need to make a decision. You need to decide whether uh, to, you know, select the, the left, the left edge or the right edge, for example. Okay, so these are the most decisive or important points when you're having a random walker uh, going through a graph. So to analyze the behavior of a random walker. So in diffusion models, we always think, uh, when you say diffusion model, information flow, you always think of information as, you can model it as a random walker on a graph, okay? So this is, you know, um, uh, the uh, one of the easiest ways to uh, investigate diffusion on a graph. So the question that we are interested in to understand if the, um, the diffusion or the random walker efficiently walks on the graph. So remember, our goal is what? Our goal is to investigate efficiency of information uh, flow on the graph, okay? So this is the question that we're interested in. What is the probability of the random walker reaching a specific destination by the shortest path, okay? So basically, if you remember the first scenario, if you have a global knowledge of the graph, if you have, you know exactly your destination, you know your starting point, and you can easily uh, find the shortest path as um, to go from A to B, then imagine that this shortest path that you can found using the global knowledge, you can always easily reproduce it or easily find it, okay, using the random walker. So this is the key question, okay, here. So uh, we might have two different, uh, basically, uh, possibilities. So what is the probability of a random walker reaching a specific destination? The first one, let's say, okay, there's a high probability. Uh, so if the, there is a high probability, it means that the shortest path in the graph is easily accessible. So if you look at the graph structure, it's not too complex that the random walker will get lost at those, uh, at different, maybe complex, very forked, branched out intersections, okay? So it means that you can easily spot out the shortest path. So if the probability is high. 
And also, it means that the efficiency of both the random and deterministic walker. So the deterministic walker, this is, you know, the, the first model, the uh, shortest path routing model, okay? It means that they will find exactly the same path, okay? So ultimately, we will find the, the, the solution, the best solution. Now, when the probability is low, what does it mean? So the probability that our random walker reaches his destination by the shortest path is low, it means that, well, the shortest path might be hidden. So we, he cannot easily, you know, like, uh, find it, although he biases maybe his, uh, the choice, for example, here, he biases his random choices uh, along the busiest roads or the most important connections. So using, for example, the strength of the connection. So even when doing that, it will not... Uh, the probability is still low. So this depends on what? The topology and the structure of the graph. And the other thing it means like basically the deterministic walker is more efficient than the random walker. So now depending on the data you have, depending on the problem you want to solve, uh, and also the time complexity, the size of your graph, you might want to use either, you know, the shortest routing path modeling or the diffusion model. So this depends mainly on, on the structure of, of your graph, okay? So what I would like you guys to do now, we're, we'll take one minute and I want, you, I want you to sketch or illustrate two graphs, okay, uh, that represent these scenarios. So imagine a random walker walking through a graph and then the probability for him to find his destination is low. And another case where the probability is high. So we have seen so many things. We've seen cores, core periphery. We've seen, you know, centralities. We've seen hubs. So uh, try to think about these key, you know, topological structures that we um, have um, um, examined before. And think about what makes it easy for the random walker to find his destination or not. So, one minute, and you guys, or two minutes, okay? So to make it easy, you can guys think about an unweighted graph, okay, binary, just uh, a simple binary graph.
Okay, so let's look at this first graph. For example, if I wanted to make it very easy for the walker to find uh, um, the shortest path, then so this is the starting point and this is the end point. And then here I can uh, create a branch, right, like different three branches right there. And then maybe something like this, okay? So in this case, you can see that the shortest path is quite obvious. It's not, so even if when you're diffusing, you will easily, you know, kind of find this one. So you're going from one node to the other node. And you're, you're not kind of, you're, you're, you're not revisiting nodes that you visited before. So this structure is like very simple. But imagine if I have something like this, okay? So now I'm going to add a few things. And you guys will give me your different suggestions too, okay? So imagine that I do add, oops, okay. So a node right here, another one here, another one here, another one there. And we create like cycles. Right? So what do you guys notice? That the diffusion process right here, it will the walker will go through these. But then the problem is that it might go back to this point, okay? So this is what we call a detour. So in this case, the walker might get lost in those detours and not reach its ultimate destination, okay? Like the diffusion process might not... Uh, uh, will not be efficient. So it might reach, but it might not reach too, okay? So uh, this is, you know, one of the cases where the probability will be very low. Why is that? Because the, the shortest path is not um, uh, very apparent, but this is a simple example. We can have even more complex examples. Do you have, guys, any other uh, suggestions? Yes? Uh, I think uh, in the short, uh, if there's a note in the shortest path, it has a uh, high degree of certainty. Yes. Uh, so the probability that uh, the traveler uh, takes the, the best, best option will be uh, will decrease uh, because there is a high probability to uh, to walker to take the wrong destination. That's right. So if you have a, a hub node and the hub node here is using, you have used degree centrality, okay, so it means um, that this node has a high degree, then uh, some, maybe some of those uh, paths might lead to the, uh, the destination, um, or maybe a single one, okay, let's imagine that a single one will go to this destination, but somehow your random walker, if he uh, follows these, um, one of these four paths, it might get lost in, in the network doing different things, okay, and not finding uh, its ultimate destination. So this might also cause that, uh, make it, cause the probability to decrease of uh, finding the shortest path. Good. Uh, any other examples? Yes? If you think about the reverse uh, scenario where the, the source node is one of the peripheral nodes and the destination is the core node. Okay, so you're you're going the other way around. So you have a, a core in, um, a core graph. So maybe so what you're saying is that your destination is what? One of the peripheral nodes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the destination is one of the core node. Okay, so we have a core. Okay, and then we have some peripheral nodes. So this is something like that, the core. And here you have peripheral nodes. Okay, so? So if you're starting from, uh, so the, your starting point is a peripheral node. Yeah. Okay, so you're starting from a peripheral node and then you're trying to uh, find, uh, you know, go to the core. So yeah, so it might be higher. So especially if you're going to uh, the point of contact right there. 
Yeah. Okay. Good. So yeah. So here the probability will be um, high, and in this example, starting from this one and reaching this node, the probability will be low. Okay. So these are very good examples. Uh, now. So to define the, the diffusion efficiency, okay, so we will look at these two particular measures. So we first need to understand these measures, and then we will be able to define the efficiency. So these two measures, they also quantify uh, the diffusion efficiency on a graph. So the diffusion efficiency, uh, what, what, what it means is that we want to quantify, to quantify the ease to find the shortest path, how easy it is to find the shortest path via a random walk. Okay, so this is, you know, what we want to measure. And to measure that, we will look at these two. So let's start with the first one, the search information. 